Hello, and thank you for joining this webcast and for participating in the College Week Live International Day event today. Greetings from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. My name is Jill Matoliak, and I'm the International Admissions Coordinator here at the college. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about HAC, the support, the support services we provide to our students, and to the general admissions process for the college. Um, I want to give you a general idea of where we are like, located in the United States. Um, Pennsylvania is the uh, red dot on the map. Um, we are considered to be part of the northeastern part of the country. And then Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, where our largest campus is located, um, is considered to be part of central um, Pennsylvania. So we are in the central part of Pennsylvania. My presentation is going to take about 30 minutes, and then after that, um, please feel free to submit any questions, and we will go through the questions at the end. Just to give you some general hack facts, um, Hack was the first community college um, in Pennsylvania. It was founded in 1964. We just celebrated our 50th anniversary last year. Um, Hack has been admitting international students on the F1 visa for about 30 years, and we have providing, been providing virtual online classes for about 10 years. Um, Hack is accredited by the Middle States Commission um, of Higher Education, so we follow a lot of the same policies and procedures um, and regulations as um, four-year colleges and universities. Um, we offer over 150 different programs. Um, as, and as I said earlier, we do have online programs. We have 13 of our degree programs that are completely online. Um, HAC has nearly 21,000 students, and 6,000 of those students do take classes online with virtual learning. Um, this past fall, so fall 2014, we had 193 students attending HAC on the F1 visa um, from 56 different countries. Uh, just to give you a little bit more information about HAC, um, we call ourselves HAC Central Pennsylvania's Community College, um, and we do have more than one location. Um, you will see here um, some pictures of the different campuses. We have five campuses. We have a campus in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Um, you will also see the computer button on there as we also do offer the virtual online classes. One thing to be aware of with our HAC campuses is that none of our campuses have on-campus housing. So you are required to find um, housing in order to attend the college. I do assist students with that process. We have a Harrisburg International House in downtown Harrisburg as well as an international house in Lancaster. Um, so there are options um, for students. Um, some of you might not be aware of community colleges, so I want to give you some general information about the community college option um, in higher education and talk about some of the benefits of a community college. Um, the first one is open admissions. Um, open admissions means that as long as you have a high school degree or a GED and are 18 years of age or older, um, you will be accepted to the college as long as you submit the general requirements. Um, which we have, and I'll go over them a little bit later on. Um, we, do not, we do have selective programs, so some of our programs like nursing and our education programs, due to requirements of the Department of State and the Department of Education of Pennsylvania, um, they, will, um, they do have some requirements for GPAs, et cetera, but most of our programs do not have any type of GPA requirement to be accepted into. Um, we do not have any requirements of SATs or TOEFL either to be accepted to the college. Our second benefit of attending a community college is the cost. Um, it is a quality education, yet affordable. Um, international students at HAC pay the out-of-state tuition rate, which is $358.50 per credit. Um, most classes are three credit courses. Um, so. As an F1 student, you're required to be a full-time student with 12 credits. So for this semester, our students paid $4,302 for their 12 credit requirements. 
some schools, depending on what type of college or university you're looking at, their tuition per credit could be $1,000. So one class could be $3,000. So you can see the cost savings there, um, as well as we're still providing you with the same type of education. Um, the third benefit, we are a gateway to four-year universities. We have a lot of transfer agreements and articulation agreements with four-year universities. Um, so we can help your process of transferring on to complete your bachelor's degree um, very smooth. Um, our fourth um, benefit is our small classes. Um, we do not have any facilities on any of our campuses to offer classes with 200 students in. So most of our classes um, are between 20 um, students to one faculty. Um, I would say the max would be 30. Most of our classes are about 25 um, students to one faculty member. So that is a great benefit in that you get to meet your faculty members, get to know them, um, and get to build a relationship with your professors. Um, our next benefit is the variety of majors. As I said earlier, we offer over 150 different majors. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the majors that are most popular with our current international students. Um, but we have a lot of options for students, sometimes options that they are not even aware of um, in their home country. Um, we do have an undecided major, which many students start in. Um, the undecided major lets students focus on their general education classes. So that would be English 101, Psychology 101, the general classes, so that while they are exploring the different options of what they want to study, um, they're still working on their college credits towards their degree. And our final benefit is our flexibility. Um, we have classes offered morning, afternoon, evening. Um, we even have some weekend classes. I wouldn't say that they're always popular, but for some students, they do fit in best with their schedule of what they're looking to do. Um, and so we will work with you to help you come up with a schedule that meets your needs. Um, here are some of the top majors that we have here at HACC. Um, these are ranked in order from one to 10 for the last, um, for the students who were enrolled here in the fall of 2014. Um, you will see the undecided major is the first major, and this is for students who are not sure what major they want to focus on, so they start, as I said earlier, with their general education classes. The second top major is our English as a Second Language program. Um, we do have a full-time ESL program, and we have many students who come to the college just to study ESL. Um, they might already have a bachelor's degree from their country, um, and so with that, they are looking to come here to study English and master the English language, and then they transfer on to a higher level degree to get their master's or PhD, but they need that English training. Um, we have many students who come just for English training or students who come for English training and then also work on their associate's degree. Our English as a Second Language program, if you need the full program, is a one-year program, two semesters, um, two semesters of taking two ESL classes a semester. Um, you'll see the other top majors are business administration, nursing, engineering, architecture, marketing, math, computer science, computer information system, and international studies. As an international student, you are required to be enrolled in an associate's degree at HACC um, to be a full-time student. Um, we have two different types of degrees. Um, we have an associate's degree, which is a program that is designed for you to transfer on to a four-year college or university when you're done here at Hack. And then we have a degree, a, a career associates. The career associates is designed that once you have completed that degree, that you would be ready to go off and work in your field. So our top major four of nursing ooh, um, is a career associates degree. So that degree, um, once students are done with that, are able to take the board exam to become a registered nurse. Um, most of the other degrees that you see here are all transfer degrees. So pro those programs are designed that students will be transferring on to a four-year college or university when they are done with their studies. This slide here just gives you a general um, overview of the top schools that our um, students, including our international students, transfer to once they are done here at HACC. 
hack says that about one third of our students go on to transfer to complete a bachelor's degree once they are done with their studies here um, the same schools that um, our regular students transfer to are also the most popular classes with our international student penn state um, is the most popular university um, penn state Harrisburg, there is a Harrisburg location, um, and the Penn State Harrisburg campus offers four-year degrees. So students can complete the first two here and then go on to Penn State for two more years and get their bachelor's. The other schools listed here are York College, Millersville University, Pennsylvania College of Health and Sciences, Elizabethtown College, Shippensburg University, Westchester University, Central Penn College, and then um, LVC right here is Lebanon Valley College, which is in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. And we do tell students you do not need to stay local in order to transfer. We have had international students who have stayed local as well as we had a student once who went to the University in Alaska. Um, depending on what your major is and your desire is going to depend on where you want to transfer. It is best to know where you want to transfer early um, because that is going to make the transfer process smoother um, and also to help ensure that the classes you take here are going to transfer on to that four-year university. I think one of the biggest misconceptions about a community college are the resources that are available to our students. Um, we here at HACC offer pretty much all of the same resources as most four-year colleges and universities. Um, so you'll see here some pictures of some things that are available to our students. Um, we have the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, a very active group of students on all of our campuses. Um, we have different options. Um, we have a student newspaper, a student journal. Um, we have athletics. Um, we also have study abroad options. Now you as international students are coming here, but we also do offer many different programs that you could pick from if you would want to travel somewhere else. Um, SGA is our Student Government Association. For all the classes and all the credits you take, you do have to pay a student activity fee. Um, SGA gets that fee and the, that group of students is, are the ones who plan the different activities that go on um, throughout the semester on campus. Um, there are many different options. Um, we do have a very active international awareness club. I'm one of the co-advisors of that. And it is a club that is made up of international students as well as US students permanent residents or students who might have been born in another country and um, are now here in the U.S. for something. Um, smart thinking is also listing, listed here. This is a free tutoring, um, online tutoring um, application that is available to our students. All five of our campuses also have um, tutoring centers and all tutoring is free. That is part of the fees that you pay when you register for classes. You might be thinking, why study at HAC? Um, the three most popular reasons that we have students come and study at HAC is number one, they want to master the English language. Um, they feel that mastering the English language will help them with their career back home or will assist them in going forward with a higher level degree. Um, they also, uh, the second reason um, is experience another culture. Um, some students come for just one semester, one year, just because they want to experience the educational system in the United States. Um, that is really up to you and your educational goal. Um, you have many options um, and if you want to stay and just complete part of the program or a complete program. And our final reason is the numerous programs of study. Um, I can't tell you how many students we have that come here who come just because they want to learn English and during their time here realize that they really want to stay and complete a degree. Um, and we will work and help students um, with that process if they decide to stay longer. Um, you might be thinking, well, how would I get started if I wanted to attend TAC? Um, pretty, our admissions process is very simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you will see here a picture of our main website, www.hack.edu, and you will see up in the upper right-hand corner, there is a button that says Apply Now. Um, you can go to the Apply Now button and submit information about yourself. You would need to submit a profile, and then after that, you would be able to submit an online application. 
Um, HACC has four requirements in order to apply and be accepted at the college. One, you need to complete the online application. Two, you need to submit proof that you've graduated from high school in your country. Three, you need to submit financial support documents stating that you have the required financial funds, which we will talk about in a minute. Um, and five or, or four, we require a copy of the information page of your passport. Applying to the college is free. There is no application fee and there are no fees involved with applying and being accepted to the college. Your support documents can actually be uploaded into the application online. Um, so we do not require that you mail your documents to us. As long as you um, upload them through our secure system, we will accept those documents with your application. Um, I will work very closely with students in reviewing your documents, making sure that once your application is complete, where I need to mail your acceptance packet, help you with the visa process. So um, my goal and my job um, is to help make the process as simple and as easy as possible and to walk you through step by step. Um, as I said, one of the main requirements for the application piece um, for the application process is the financial requirement. Um, you'll see on the screen here a breakdown of our financial cost. Um, HACC requires to see $24,000 um, and these are fees for one year. So those tuition and fees is for two semesters of being a full-time student with 12 credits. Your health insurance is a mandatory fee for one year. Um, room and board, um, that is what we estimate if you're going to get uh, an apartment throughout the local area um, for what it would cost you um, per year. Um, books and supplies, that's an estimate. And I always tell students, it depends on what your major is, what you are looking to study on the cost of what your books are going to be. Um, if you're going to be a nursing major or if you're going to be an art major or a business administration major, you have very different types of books that you are purchasing. So the cost is going to be very different in that area. Um, transportation, um, as a community college, we are what is considered a commuter school. So all students drive here. So students have the option of using our public transportation system in the area in which they're living or purchasing a car. Um, and that is really up to the student in which option they would like to do. Miscellaneous expenses, um, this is just money to cover any extra needs. Right now it's very cold here. Um, we're supposed to get, um, I think, two to three inches of snow overnight tonight into tomorrow. So depending on what part of the world you're coming from, um, you're going to need to get a winter coat when you arrive. So that's what we consider a miscellaneous expense. Um, so that brings the total amount to $24,000. Um, I can tell you there are a few options with sponsorship. Um, one, you can sponsor yourself. You would need to submit a bank statement in your name. Um, two, you can have one sponsor who sponsors you for the total cost of $24,000. Or probably the most popular option is the third option, which is you have multiple sponsors. You might have um, your parents who are going to provide you with $10,000, an uncle who's going to provide you with $5,000, and then another family member or friend who's going to provide you with another $10,000. We do not have a limit on how many sponsors you can or cannot have. Um, I would say the majority of our students have a minimum of two to three sponsors. Um, each sponsor would need to fill out uh, an affidavit of support, which is one of the forms on our website that is needed um, for this financial piece of the application. Um, and then they would need to submit a bank statement showing the funds that they state that they are going to be providing you. So if they state that they're providing you with $10,000, they need to submit a bank statement showing a minimum balance of $10,000. Once again, those documents do not need to be mailed to us. Um, they can be scanned and uploaded into the online application process. Um, just to give you a general overview, once your application is completed, you will be accepted to the college. I will process an application packet for you, contact you to confirm where you would want that information mailed. Um, we try and mail all of our packets, acceptance packets, with the I-20 document. Um, 
via UPS International Express Mail. So after you are accepted and you get that email from me saying congratulations, um, there are some additional steps of what you need to do. First, you would pay your service fee, <coughs> excuse me, um, which is a fee that is required by the federal government. You must have a SEVIS fee receipt when you go for your visa appointment. Once you've paid your SEVIS fee, you would then go to your U.S. Embassy's website and you would apply for your visa. Unfortunately, every U.S. Embassy is different around the world. Um, some embassies you go on Wednesday, of the, the first Wednesday of the month, and that's when you can apply for F-1 visas. Most embassies do require you to schedule an appointment online, and depending on the time of year, really depends on if you can get an appointment within um, a week or if sometimes it takes six weeks. Um, we say June, July, and August are the busiest times of the semester. So that is when um, you need to make sure you're allowing enough time to get a visa appointment, get your visa, and to arrive here for classes. <coughs> um, excuse me. Um, after you get your visa, um, you would want to contact me and let me know, and then you would travel to the United States into this local area. You are able to enter the United States 30 days prior to the start of classes. So right now we are accepting applications for the summer semester, which starts May 26th, and for the fall semester that starts um, August 24th. So you would be able to enter the United States 30 days before either of those dates if that's when you would be looking to apply. Once you arrive in the U.S., you would contact me and we would schedule you for a placement test and registration day. And then we have one scheduled day of orientation, usually the week before classes, for all of our new students. And that is when we um, review all of the hack general information, we review um, the federal immigration laws that go along with your F1 status, we have a lot of guest, guest speakers, we feed you, and we also have some fun to help you get excited for starting your classes here at the college. Um, and then we also do all of the standard pay your tuition, get your photo ID, if you need to get a parking permit, all of those things we help make sure that you have taken care of before classes start. Um, at this point, I'm going to open up the um, floor for questions. Um, you'll see here on uh, the slide is my name, my email, my phone number, um, our web page, our Facebook page, Twitter, Skype. Um, so I'm available many different ways to communicate with students. Um, I check my email constantly. I'm on it all day because that's how I usually um, communicate and interact with students. Um, orientation, I always say, is my favorite time of the year because that's when I get to meet with students sometimes that I've been working with for six months, depending on when they first inquired about the college um, and then when they get their visa and they finally arrive here in the USA. Does anybody out there have any questions, general questions about higher education, about community colleges, about HAC that I could answer for you? Come on, someone has to have a question. I can tell you right now, this is the best time to be applying for our summer semester, um, as well as our fall semester. The fall semester, all of your financial documents would need to be um, dated after March 1st, but that's really only about two and a half weeks away. Um, so this is um, a good time to be applying for either semester. If you're interested in the summer, I would recommend you apply as soon as possible, just to make sure you have enough time to complete um, the application process, apply for your visa, and arrive. You would be able to arrive anytime after April 27th for the summer semester. Any questions? I 
I see people are saying hello. Hello to you. <laughs> um, I can tell you one of the most frequently asked questions um, that we do get from students um, because we are a community college is what do students do? Um, because you're not on campus, you're not living in a residential hall, um, so you don't have those type of activities already planned for you, which is very common at a four-year university. Um, you're very lucky in central Pennsylvania, there is a lot of stuff to do around here. We are located in an area that it's very easy to get to um, some major cities. We're about an hour and a half from Boston, about three hours from DC, an hour and a half, if good traffic, to New York City. Um, so a lot of students will travel on the weekends. Um, there's a lot of activities throughout the Harrisburg and Lancaster areas, um, a lot of different festivals and activities, as well as um, all kinds of uh, diverse activities as well. Um, we have a lot of um, cultural groups um, that have festivals or have different um, programs, and they're always looking to include our international students in them. Um, as well as some local schools also have some F1 students, and we've had some um, local schools and HACC partner um, for the international students to get together for some social activities um, as well. All right, I just got a question um, from a student, and they asked how long have I been here, if I could share some of my favorite things about HACC. Um, I have actually worked at Hack now for about 12 and a half years. Um, when I first started here at the college, there was just me, myself, and I. I did um, all of the international process. Um, we now um, are very fortunate that we have a Center for Global Education. So the Center for Global Education um, houses my office, the International Missions Office, um, Jennifer Daly, the International Student Coordinator's Office, and then Nancy Heil, the study abroad coordinator. So anything that happens globally um, in and out for students coming here to study or going out to study abroad um, is all located in one central location. Um, I think that is a great, um, um, I think that is a great uh, option um, we have such support services. So you have all of the college support services that are available to you, plus you have an office that is specifically here to help you meet your needs. Um, we have walk-in hours. Students come in all the time um, asking for different questions. Um, we just received a different, another question um, asking if there is still time to apply for the summer semester that starts in May. And the answer to that is yes. Um, uh, oh no. Where did it go? Oh, there I am. Sorry, I lost you for a minute. Um, yes, the deadline to apply for the summer semester is April 15th, so there is still plenty of time <coughs> to apply for the summer semester. Um, you would be um, best, it, it would be in your best interest to try and apply, I would say, by mid-March to make sure that you have enough time to get your visa appointment and then to receive your visa and to arrive here in the United States before classes start. Um, over the summer, you are still required to be a full-time student. Um, but with the summer classes, um, a full-time student is only six credits. So you would just take um, one ESL class or two regular college classes to meet your college requirement. Any other questions? I just had a student um, submit another question, and their question there um, is, could you please explain if a student would be eligible for <clears throat> on-campus employment? That's an excellent question. I did not cover that at all in my presentation. 
yes, international students are eligible to work on campus as an F1 student. That is the only um, place that you are eligible to get work. Um, so international students do work on our campuses. I do tell students that your English skill is going to determine if you are eligible to get a job immediately because um, a lot of times a student who is working in an office on campus is the first person someone sees when they walk in their office. So you're answering the phone, you're answering um, greeting people who are walking into offices. Depending on which campus you decide to attend also is going to determine on the amount of positions that are available. The Harrisburg campus is the campus uh, that is the largest. Uh, we say the Harrisburg campus has about 10,000 students overall. Um, so there are more jobs available on this campus. I know here in my office we employ three students and two of those students are international students. Sorry, I'm reading through some comments here. Okay, another question, this is a great question too, and this is information that we do cover during our orientation process, but I um, can certainly provide that information to you now. A student asked if you're eligible for an on-campus job, so that means you're eligible for a social security number. Yes, if you get a job on campus, you are eligible for a social security number, and all students are eligible to get a driver's license here in the state of Pennsylvania. You do not need to have um, a social security number in order to get a driver's license and we will assist you with that process um, once you arrive um, and review all of those requirements during orientation. Um, some of the general information that is covered at orientation is we review your health insurance plan, we review um, on-campus employment, we have someone come in from our career services office and talk about your options. Um, we review all of the F1 immigration requirements. We review a little bit of information about HAC. Um, we have someone come in from our safety and security department and just review some general information with you um, about the rules and regulations and laws um, within Pennsylvania and the state, the United States and how they could possibly be different from your country. Um, we have um, the Director of Student Life come in and they come in and talk to you about all the different activities that are available as well as all of the clubs. Um, you are pretty much eligible to join any club unless um, there are some clubs that are very um, specific to a student's major, but most clubs are available and open to all students. I just received another question. This is an excellent question. They asked um, if students get denied a visa for coming to a community college. Um, and I would say that that is possible. Um, we cannot tell any student 100% sure if they will receive a visa or not. That is a decision that is made by the U.S. Embassy and the counselor who um, meets with them. Um, we do send you information in your welcome packet that helps you to um, prepare for your visa appointment, certain questions that you should be ready to answer. Um, we make sure that you have a list of the documents that you should be taking with you for your visa appointment. Um, um, we do encourage you to review the program um, of study that you picked at the college and make sure you understand some of that program. You have some general knowledge about the college. Um, I always tell students that if you are denied a visa to let me know why um, and sometimes we can come up with a list of additional documents that you could reapply for your visa. Um, I would say every semester I have one or two students. Unfortunately, it takes them more than one visa appointment to get their visa. Um, I would say the most common reasons that students are denied their visa 
is one for financial support. The embassy does not believe the student has the financial means to come here. Or two, um, the student might have a lot of family in the U.S. and they are concerned that the student will not return um, to their country. Um, so it's always very important to show with your visa appointment that you have strong ties to your, um, your country, whether you have family there, if you, if you own anything, your family owns anything um, in that area. See if there's any more questions here. Um, a student just asked, what is your favorite thing about Hack?" And I would say my favorite thing about Hack is the Center for Global Education um, and the college in general. We're um, very um, friendly and we're very much here to help our students and we want to see our students be successful. Um, so we definitely, I think, go above and beyond. Um, one, in getting to know you as a person, and two, in getting to um, help you um, in how to help you uh, get to know um, the area and make sure that what you need is what you're receiving to be successful here. Um, someone just submitted a question on how do you show ties to your country for your visa appointment? Um, and basically, um, the key things we usually look at is that we usually have students make a list of the family they still have in their current country, um, show the ties that you have there. Um, one, um, if you own land, well, I know most students do not own something, but a lot of times a family member will add your name to a deed or to a lease so that you can show that you own some form of property in your home country before you, um, so that you would want to return to that. Um, sometimes students have an employment option. Sometimes students are already employed in their country and they're taking a leave of absence to come here, whether it be to learn English or to gain some general uh, English skill um, or a certain skill, um, say in computer science, um, that their employer will give them a letter stating that once this individual returns home, they would employ them again. Um, I would say they're the most common documents that a student will use to show that they have strong ties to their country. Any more questions? Let's see here. I just got a question from a student asking um, where the majority of our students are from. Um, in the one slide I did say we had 193 um, international students um, from 53 countries. Um, so our top countries where students are coming from are China, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, uh, South Korea, um, and Kuwait. Um, and then we do have many students from many different countries. We have some students who they are the person who is representing their country, or we have two or three um, students who are coming from one country. Um, I'm very happy to say that all of our students are not from one area. They for, are from around the world, so we have a very diverse um, population of students um, who he, are here at HAC. Um, and here at HACC, we consider an international student a student who is on the F-1 visa. There are many other students who are studying at the college on different visa statuses or who have permanent residency um, that are um, also here. So there is that diversity um, in addition to just our F-1 students on the college campus. Perhaps I have another question. Huh? I just received the question of, of does, HACC re, does HACC offer any scholarships? Um, HACC does not currently offer any scholarships to newly admitted international students. It is something that we are 
um, trying to work on um, and to get some scholarships specifically just for our F1 students. Um, but once you are a student here, the Hack Foundation three times a year has a scholarship program that if you are a current student that you are eligible to um, apply and see if you meet any of the requirements for those scholarships. Um, we do tell students that those scholarships are um, limited, um, but we have had international students receive scholarships um, every session um, throughout the year um, if they apply. The key thing is you must apply for the scholarships. If you don't apply for them, um, then you're not going to receive them. You are also eligible to apply for any outside um, scholarships. So if you have a scholarship potentially through um, an employer, a family member's employer, um, a government scholarship, anything of that, you're also eligible to, to apply for and then use when you attend here at the college. Um, I know a student just asked about the transfer process, when a student can transfer. Um, you can really transfer at any time. It really depends on your major and what you're looking to, um, to study. Um, there are some programs that it is preferred that you complete your associate's degree here at the college and then transfer on to a four-year school. I know there are some four-year colleges and universities that if you complete your associate's degree here, that might make you eligible for a transfer international scholarship when you attend that school. Um, but then depending on your major, you might just take some general education classes here and then transfer on to your four-year college or university. Um, your advisor, um, and your advisor would be Jennifer Daly, the international student coordinator at the college. She will meet with you at orientation and then throughout your first year and your studies here at HAC um, and will work with you to find out what your educational goal is. If you have schools you're interested in transferring to, she would help you learn how to use the transfer check sheets that would help to make sure that the classes you are taking here at HAC um, would count here at HAC for your degree and then also for your degree, say at Penn State Harrisburg, so you don't have to retake classes. Um, our goal here at HAC is that the classes you take here are going to count for your degree um, when you transfer to your four-year college or university. We do not want you to have to take any classes over, and so we will work with you to help to ensure that that will happen. Excellent question. I just received another question about scholarships. Um, unfortunately, as I said, we do not offer any scholarships to newly admitted students. Um, but once you are a student here, you are eligible to um, participate in the scholarship program through our Hack Foundation. Okay, any more questions? You guys have had some great questions. Hmm. All right, I'm going to say if no one has any other questions at this time, um, that's going to end um, our broadcast. Um, thank you so much for joining um, me and learning about Hack Central Pennsylvania's Community College. Please feel free to jot down my email if you would like a copy of the presentation, the slides. I could, would be more than happy to forward them on to you, or if you have any um, questions that you would like answered one-on-one, -on -one, you can email me. I know sometimes students um, are hesitant to ask questions on this type of um, broadcast, but I'm the only one that can see the questions coming up. Um, but I wish you well in your college search, um, and please feel free, as I said, to contact me 
if you have any additional questions or if you need anything, and good luck in your college search. Have a great day.